Good evening and welcome to coverage of the Community Super League. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe and I am joined by Aaron Campbell from The Girlfriend. Hello. Yeah, hi, Aaron. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm so excited about tonight. Yeah, tonight is, I think it's one <laughs> of the most anticipated formats. You know, we're doing here on CSL, we do a different format every week and tonight we're playing No Bandless Modern. We're going to introduce you to what that means, although pretty self-explanatory and uh, but, but you know some of the moving parts and what we're going to be seeing on that in a minute i did want to check in on our standings bracket you know when we get a little further down the line on csl we'll be diving into this a little bit further but i really just wanted to see that uh really awesome brewmaster rank right next to my name <laughs> you're humble marshall that's what we all love about you yeah that's it and and so so but but yeah you can see how things are kind of shaping up as you follow some of your favorite players here on the CSL and and we're still in the early stages so you know there's not a ton you can take away I think at this point but like I said you know we'll be we'll be dialing in more when we get a, a few more weeks down the line and the standings start to really shake out about about who's in the lead and, and who's ahead and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. um, we've been having fun with it though haven't we Aaron yeah, we have. You know, each week has been an adventure. And, you know, especially for the girls and I, you know, we've just really kind of learned to let loose, you know, where we, you know, we're all kind of spiky at heart. And, and so over the last couple of weeks, we've kind of let that go and just be like, we're here to have fun. Like, we're here to put on a show. And especially with the deck that we brought to the table this week, we were like, we really want to give the people something to see because um, these are cards that you really don't get to see played very often. And so to see things like Mental Misstep and see things like Skull Clamp, I wasn't around for a lot of these cards. And I'm sure a lot of the viewers haven't either. And so, um, to really see these cards in action, you start to understand, oh, that's why they're banned. And so um, so, so I think that's yeah. going to be a highlight of tonight is just having people kind of clue in and see how, how scary these cards are. Well, when I get right into it, let's take a look at our format for tonight. It is no mm -hmm. banned list modern. Now, what this means is very simply that the, car the sets that are legal and modern are still legal. Mm -hmm. And all the sets that aren't legal are still illegal. So those cards aren't, you know, banned in the same sense that we're talking about. We're talking about the cards that have been specifically taken, you know, out of the legal sets to be banned. And you can see, you know, there's Jace the Mind Sculptor up there. That's, of course, one of the big headliners. You just mentioned a few, you know, Mental Misstep, Skull Clamp. And there's, you know, I don't know, there's 40-something cards or whatever on the modern ban list. And what they've done here on CSL for this week is you can play as many of those as you want. Well, up to four. But you get to just... Go nuts. You can play Jace. You can play Stoneforge. You can do anything you want uh, within the, the sets that are legal in the modern format. And the gloves are off. You know, it mm -hmm. says their turn four is for suckers. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, I, I don't know. Like, I, I put some some thought into it. I had a few chat few chats with some friends about it. And, you know, Jace the Mind Sculptor, right? Um, you know, one of the best cards ever. And... One of my favorite cards and a card that, you know, I thought, oh, I'm going to play a Jace deck. This is going to be sweet. I, I think Jace is just too slow for no bad list modern, to be honest. <laughs> did did yeah, you Jace guys toy around with a control deck or anything like that? Well, you know, Hallie is very much a tempo player at heart. You know, most, I'm the only black mage amongst the girlfriend bracket. They're all blue mages. So the minute that they saw that this format was coming up, they were like, we get to use Ponder and Preordain and Mental Misstep. And I'm having a gatherer of these cards. Because I'm like, what are these? What's this life? I don't understand. Um, so they were very excited. They wanted to do something tempo. And me being me, I was very interested in things like Glimpse of Nature for elves. Um, I was interested in Dread Return, obviously, for Dredge Hypergenesis. I was a living end player for a long time. Um, so I really wanted to, like, this is what... I live for. I want to do broken things. And so I kind of agree with you, you know, casting Delvers and casting Ponders, casting Jays. It's cute, but we can go bigger. And, too and we're fair. Going to yeah. Too fair. And, and, and I'll tell you what, you know, I think a lot of people think along the same lines as you, Aaron, do broken stuff and you are going to see very broken <laughs> stuff tonight. It is going to be one of those things where, you know, we've had a few formats, you know, we did some tribal and we had a few broken decks in there too, but you know, we did Momir last week, which is kind of just coin flipping against each other. But this one, this is no hold bar. They told us, go for it. Do yeah. crazy stuff with, <laughs> with this no modern, no bandless format. And we're going to see it. Why don't we take a look now, Aaron, at our matchups for this week so you can, mm -hmm. so everybody can get a feel for who's playing who and when. We're going to be watching, you and I, Aaron, are going to be commentating on Magic the Amateur, Ma uh, Megan and Maria versus Paul Cheon first up, and we're going to set that up after this. Um, but also, we've got Kenji versus Wedge. We've got The Professor versus Gabby. We've got Loading Ready Run versus me, and then... Last in that fifth match, Aaron Forsyth versus you in the girlfriend bracket. And 
<laughs> I got to I cannot <laughs> wait to see I, like I happen to know what you're playing, but I won't mm-hmm. say it. I'm not spoiling it, but I have no idea what Aaron's on and I'm really <laughs> curious to see cuz Aaron like if you tell him no holds barred, it gets ugly. Like that guy will bring the heat yeah. and uh yeah, I I am really curious to see what he's brought to the table as well. Any of the matchups stand out to you, Aaron? Uh, well, I'm really excited about the Aaron matchup. You know, he beat me two years ago at the Community Cup. We did the the Vintage Masters Cube, I think it was, mm-hmm. and he mm-hmm. beat me with Laquatus' champion. It is seared in my brain. And oh, so God. when I saw that we were playing him tonight, it was like Aaron versus Aaron grudge match. There can only be did he, one. Did he and do so, the laugh? Did he do the Aaron? He didn't do the laugh. Cap. If I remember correctly, he did the very deadpan, like, well, I didn't think the card was that good. Like, oh, <laughs> what happened? And meanwhile, I'm like slaughtered and I'm dead. And um, so I'm excited to face him. I'm excited to see the Magic Damage cheering, who needs to change their name because they now have pro points. Yeah, the pro the ring now. Oh, the pro the ring. They need to have that. And so, I mean, we're all just, these are all going to be entertaining. I think uh, they're all going to be great. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, Aaron, why don't we take a look at who we're going to watch? You and I. We're going to mm-hmm. be, you know, we're know, five minutes out or whatever from watching Megan and Maria play against Paul Cheon. And uh, I thought, you know, what better time to get at least the first taste of what no ban list modern <laughs> looks like than to have you and I go over a couple of the decks that they're playing. And they're playing very different decks here. Uh, yeah. the, these decks have wildly different game plans. I don't think they have any overlapping cards. They are completely different. And both of them are decks that are completely unviable in normal modern, right? You, I think that yeah. there's a temptation to say, well, what's my favorite modern deck? Oh, I get these extra upgrades that were banned. But the truth of it is, I think most of us came to the conclusion that that's actually not the way to go, that you want to build a deck that just doesn't exist because these cards are so broken. And, and that's what we have here in this first matchup. Well, I tend to think of them, and maybe maybe I shouldn't be plugging another game on this stream, but I tend to think of them like Pokemon evolutions, where it's like, you know, we see Tron, and Tron is sort of like the first evolution, and eventually it turns into like 12 post. And so we see Infect as we see it in Modern, but when you see it in Legacy, it's just on a whole other level. And so I think a lot of the decks that we're seeing tonight are sort of like the the evolutions of what we see in Modern right now. Does that make any sense? Did I lose you there? No, no, no. Okay. I'm that with you. I'm totally with you. And <laughs> okay. so why don't we take a look at Magic the Amateurine's deck list, which is, like you said, it, it's sort of the extreme version of Tron, right? And yeah. now it doesn't use Tron lands because it it, it issues them in to. favor <laughs> yeah, of using Glimmer Post and Cloud Post. And, mm-hmm. you know, the these are lands that can produce huge amounts of mana, way, way more even than, you know, Urzatron lands. Mm-hmm. And uh, this ends up being like a sweet uh, Eldrazi. It's like kind of a hybrid, right? Like, would you would you call this deck a hybrid? I would because they're definitely trying to ramp into some things. They're using the Locus's Loci. I don't know how you pronounce the plural of that, but yeah, I would say it's definitely a nice mix of the two. Yeah, and so basically, you can see there's Thought Not Seers, there's Ulamog, there's an Emrakul, and there's Reality Smashers, which you know can be cast using the colorless mana from these cloud posts and these glimmer posts and then you can also see that they get the full four Eldrazi <laughs> temple for Eye of Ugin so Yowza and then they can cast those I guess those would be their early game plays they usually come down around turn three uh, for this deck but you know Reality Smashers Thought Not Seers we've seen how powerful those can be but then it goes a different direction as well where it's got four Primeval Titan which can search up more Glimmer Posts and Cloud Posts to produce more mana gain life and uh, get you to that Emrakul range where you're going completely over the top of your opponent in a you know pretty scary way really um, it also includes and this is one that I found interesting four Green Sun Zenith which mm-hmm. act as additional copies of Primeval Titan or can search up the one Dryad Arbor as a turn one play if they have that green mana untapped. And then also it has four Expedition Map and four Sylvan Scrying so that it can get any land that it needs once it gets that two mana. Yeah, this is a deck that keeps getting scary. I know when Randy sent us the deck list before commentary, I was just scrolling and I was like, oh, Primeval Titan, that's a, okay. And then there's Reality Smasher and you're like, together you're like and then like you're, you just keep going and you keep going and you're like this just gets really bad <laughs> yes so you know the interesting thing about this is that i think this is not one of the fastest decks right I, no. you know we've seen if you you know i don't know what you guys found uh, in your testing but i've seen quite a few different i would call them turn two decks and you know what we mean by that is a deck that can win on turn two if untouched right which 
basically never happens. But still, you know, it's a good way to classify a deck of saying, well, when could it win, you know, in an ideal scenario? And, you know, this is not one of those. Uh, th this is a deck that's going to take turn three, turn four, but once it turns the corner on that mana, it's going to do just explosive, ridiculous things. It's going to be probably able to go over the top of a, of a lot of the competition. Yeah, I'm a little concerned about this deck, though. You know, we talked about uh, these decks containing elements from decks that we already know and love, and Schwann's really is known for having their pyroclasms because they have a hard time with aggressive starts. And I'm a little concerned because the girls here don't really have any answers, maybe mental misstep, but there are no pyroclasms in this list. There's no uh, anger of the gods. There's no lightning yeah. bolts. I'm not really sure how they're going to. I know it's a non-interactive deck, but I don't see them doing anything to get in Paul's way here. Well, let's take a look at Paul's deck so we can kind of fill out the picture here we've got kind of a cool one blazing infect now for <laughs> for longtime magic fans that remember when modern first came out which was you know 2011 or whatever the first modern pro tour was in philadelphia and this is a deck that we saw uh do very well in fact make it to the top four sam black had this deck mm -hmm. and it is god i I, I, I usually try to describe it as a combo deck because it is trying to, dis to assemble a very specific interaction, but it doesn't win like a normal combat deck. It actually attacks you, which is kind mm -hmm. of cool, uh, yeah. and it attacks you with poison. So you see the four Blighted Agent, and then if you look under the lands, you'll see four Ink Moth Nexus. So those are the, the uh, Infect or Poison creatures that this, de that this deck presents, and then the key to the whole thing is the four Blazing Shoal that you see there at the top of the instance pile and you know blazing shoal is a is a spell that costs red red x and you can exile a card from your hand and it'll take the converted mana cost of that card and that's the x mm -hmm. so if you can get a card that has a converted mana cost of nine for example then your one one infect creature becomes 10 power and can kill your opponent in just one attack and mm -hmm. that's actually the main game plan uh with this deck yeah it's yeah, cool. so this is going to be really scary. Like I just, uh, I, I fear for the girls. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, and Paul's, Paul's I, I really, I be mean, honest. he. It, it, it is looking good for him. Like I don't see Infect, you know, even even a slow start for Infect. You know, I play Ad Nauseum in Modern, and you know, a slow start for Infect can still beat us by turn four. And um, if the girls aren't ready, he's just going to blaze right through them. Unintended. Yeah, yeah. He's he. This deck technically has the ability to win on turn two, though I would call this more of a turn three or turn four deck. But it is relatively interactive as well. You see that it has four spell pierce there. It can also use muddle the mixture to counter things that you know interact with you, and uh, yeah. And so it, it's one of those things where it, it could be very very quick, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Yeah, he's also running mental missteps as well, so he can he can try to protect what he has and, and just go off. It's going to be interesting because they're both not really interactive, and you know, with the exception of him attacking. And so I'm anxious to see how this goes. I'm I'm trying not to rule the girls out, but it's really hard. Yeah, I I, I do agree with you though. Both decks being not super interactive, but one of them being two turns faster. Yeah, turn and a half. I don't know exactly. You know, this isn't a matchup you see every day, but, you know, sig definitely has the ability to be uh, much faster is going to make it tough, right? That That is going to make things very difficult for uh, for Magic the Amateur. And also, I mean, let's be honest, you know, Paul's one of the best players in this field, <laughs> just straight up, right? Yeah. I mean, Paul, you know, he's the one that has the most, you know, Pro Tour experience up there with Aaron Forsyth, you know, so he, he's not going to do him any favors as far as that goes either. Yeah. I just noticed that uh, Paul is also running copies of Blasphemous Act. Like, I believe that's the card that he's ideally trying to uh, use with Blazing Shoal. Correct. Uh, <laughs> that's nasty. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But like I said, Paul is not going to be pulling any, any punches here. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, it looks like they both came prepared for graveyard decks. <laughs> why, why do you mention that here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm conditioned to look for graveyard hate. It's just the yeah. first thing I do when I see a deck like this. Is it's funny. For, for me, I, the, the thing I'm looking for are uh, Chalice of the Voids in the sideboard. <laughs> so how many chalices is too many? I'm asking for a friend. Yeah, so uh, against me, you would want the full amount. 
against some of these decks, and you know, including the ones that we're seeing here, I don't think that they would be particularly powerful. So, <laughs> well, since I, I'm not facing you, I can tell you that the girls and I are running a place out of chalices tonight. <laughs> oh, my God. So I've dodged one of the four you chalice have. of the void <laughs> matchups, but I'm going to be playing uh, loading ready to run later, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll see we'll see how that ends up going. Okay, I'm excited. <laughs> well, the players will be uh, getting ready shortly here, and uh, once they're ready, we'll be down in the feature match area to uh, to check out Paul Chion versus Magic the Amateur. And this is no band list modern tonight. I I know that you know I was poking around on Twitter and Reddit and stuff, and it seems that there's a, a very good buzz about this format. It's a format that doesn't exist, right? It's just not something that you get to see that often, and it has some really really exciting uh, possibilities. You know, and so I think that it's going to be really cool to get a chance to see what people came up with. I will say one thing, pretty daunting, right? Like w when I sat down to try to, to brew for this, I thought, okay, I'm going to come up with something sweet. And I just felt overwhelmed. You know, I just felt like because there's so many cards like modern is a very, very big card pool. And even though I was able to focus in on the the cards that are on the ban list, it was like still it just felt, you know, too big. All right, well, it looks like we're ready to go, so why don't we head down to the feature match area for round one here from the Community Super League. 